to the definite integrals video tutorial. Example 1. Through first principles, determine the area under the curve f at x equals x squared on the interval AB by evaluating the limit of the Riemann sum. This example had already been done in the previous uh, video tutorial that showed us how to approximate the area under the curve using Riemann sums. To refresh your memory, I'm going to do this example again. Make sure you're in math mode. And then I denote the width of the subinterval with delta x. The delta can be found in the miscellaneous palette. Delta x colon equals, that's how you define a constant. And the width of the subinterval is equal to b minus a over n. Now all we have to do is define the function which can be fi found in the expression palette. Go to the right by pressing tab. It's a function in terms of x. And we know the function is equal to x squared. Press enter. Now let's construct the limit of the Riemann sum. Press the limit sign. The limit as n goes to infinity. Press tab to go to the right. Limit as n goes to in infinity. The infinity you get from the common symbols palette. Press tab again. It's the limit of the sum. By pressing shift tab, you can go backwards. So press n. We want the sum to start from i equals 1. Tab, tab. f at a plus i times delta x. These are our sample points times, copy and paste again, and press enter. And there it is, the exact area under the curve f of x equals x squared on the interval a, b is equal to a third b cubed minus a third a cubed. Now we're going to be using the interactive tool right here. And we're going to enter the right side of the functions listed in this table. We're going to complete this table right here. And we're going to evaluate the limit of the Riemann sum to obtain the area, the exact area, under the curve on the interval a, b. The first function is f at x equals 1, which is just a straight line. Click on limit of Riemann sum, and the area under the function f at x equals 1 is just b minus a. The second function is f at x equals x. And the area under that curve is half b squared minus half a squared. The third function is x squared. Click on limit of Riemann sum. And the area under the curve x squared is a third b cubed minus a third a cubed. Can you notice the connection between the function f at x and the area under the curve? It has to do with the antiderivative. We'll investigate this later on. The fourth function is x cubed. Click on limit of Riemann sum. And the area under the curve x cubed is a quarter b to the 4 minus a quarter a to the 4. Let's do some trigonometric functions now. Sine x, the area under the curve sine x is cos a minus cos b. Now it should be quite obvious the, the, the connection between f at x and the area under the curve. You see that the antiderivative of sine x is a cosine. The next function is cosine x limit of Riemann sum. Again, this pattern is appearing. The antiderivative of cos is a sine. And for the exponential, note that you can always write the exponential e. And you can get it from the common symbols palette. And to write the exponent x, just press shift in the caret sign to go up there and press x limit of Riemann sum
Now, the antiderivatives of the function f at x is just x. The antiderivative of the function x is a half x squared. The antiderivative of the function x squared is x cubed over 3. The antiderivative of x cubed is x to the 4 over 4. The antiderivative of sine x is negative cosine x. The antiderivative of cosine x is sine x. And we know that since the exponential, the derivative of the exponential is an exponential itself, same goes for the antiderivative. It's also the same. E to the x. Now we come to the big connection, which I was hinting at. The fundamental connection in table one is that the area under the curve, which is the second column right here, on the interval a, b, which is just the limit of the Riemann sum, the area under the curve on the interval a, b is equal to the difference between the function's antiderivative evaluated at the lower and upper limits, a and b. This is the content of the fundamental theorem of calculus. So even look at the, the fourth function. It's equal to x cubed. The antiderivative is x to the 4 over 4. The area under the curve on the interval a, b is just equal to the difference of the function's antiderivative evaluated at the two limits, the lower and upper limits. And that's how easy it is to find the area under the curve. What we're going to do is the header of this column we can denote as, you see it's very difficult to, when you're solving math problems, you don't want to keep writing this large limit out all the time. It's quite tedious. So what Leibniz, the mathematician, did was he denoted this limit of the Riemann sum, which is just the area under the curve, he denoted it by this symbol right here in the expression palette. It's the, in, uh, it's the definite integral from a to b of f at x dx. Okay. So now we're not going to be writing out this limit anymore. We're always going to represent the area under the curve by using this much more convenient notation. It's the same thing, so um, there's no confusion here. Example 2. Determine the area under the curve, the same function, f at x equals x squared, on the interval a, b by using the definite integral in the expression palette. So step 1, using the expression palette, click on the definite integral sign. The, l the lower limit is automatically highlighted, so you can change it from, oh, we're in the general interval from A to B. So let's just keep it A, tab, B, press tab again. And the function we're dealing with is x squared. That's exactly what step 2 says. Replace the F with x squared. And press enter. Yep, and there it is. As we... That was the same result we achieved before. The area under the curve is a third b cubed minus a third a cubed. And that's how easy it is to use maple to find the area under the curve you're given. Thank you for viewing the definite integrals video tutorial provided by the maple student adoption program.